In this video, I want to work through the way that an increasing annuity works and see how the formula for future value of an annuity it becomes what it is. Okay, so I've set up a problem here. You deposit $100 at the end of each quarter in some account that pays 8% annually, compounded quarterly. I'm taking these numbers just for convenience. So let's go through a simulation, a short one. Uh, maybe we'll just do this for a year to see how this is going to work. So let's set up a bank type of uh, uh, statement. Here's a deposit. We know what that's going to be. And so this is the first quarter. And then we'll have to calculate interest and the balance here. Okay, so in the first quarter, of course, we put in $100. We don't have any interest, uh, and so our balance is just $100. Now, let's take a look at the uh, second quarter. Uh, so three months go by, we put in another $100. Now, what's our balance going to be? Well, our account is being compounded at 8% a year, uh, compounded quarterly. So what's our value going to be for the quarterly? So the rate... Uh, per quarter is going to be 0 0.08 or 4, that's just 2%. So that's a nice number for me to work with. So how do we find the interest? Well, we have to take our the amount in the account and we're going to multiply it by 0 0.02. So that works out to be just $2, a nice kind of amount. amount. So what's our balance going to be? Well, we had $100 in there. Uh, we're now adding $2 interest, but we make a deposit here of another $100. So our balance is now $202. Okay, now let's go on and take a look at the third quarter. We, again, put in $100 at the end of the quarter. Now, how do we calculate our interest? We know we're going to have to add 100 to this. Uh, so how do we figure out the interest? Well, now, again, our interest rate is at 2%. But now the amount in the account was $202. So we have to take the 2% of $202. That's still not bad. That's uh, $4.04. And, uh, okay, and this has to be added over to our balance here. So our balance becomes, uh, I guess, 300 and. Uh, six dollars and four cents okay so let's do one more quarter here all right another quarter rolls around we put in our hundred dollars so what's the interest going to be well now we've had three hundred and six dollars in the account so three oh six oh four is going to be the amount in the account. And again, the interest in the account is going to be 2%. So uh, times 0.02 becomes what? Well, uh, a little trickier to do this. Uh, so it's going to be what? It looks like $6.12. Okay, so what's our balance become? Well, we we add the interest here, and then we've got this extra $100, or actually the extra, but the hundred dollars that we uh, deposit at the end so what do we come out with we come out with four hundred and twelve dollars and sixteen cents okay so uh, and notice that we're going to end up with more than just the four hundred dollars that we put in because of the compounding effect and things like that okay now let's see if we can figure out why this formula works here all right so how do we uh, calculate this formula well, let's take a look. Uh, well, the first term, we just had $100. Uh, what happened to the second uh, term there? Well, um, well, actually, the way we should look at this is to look at the contributions to the total for each of our account, our uh, deposits. So this $100 here only contributed $100 to our total, right? Because it was only just put in here at the end, and it was never compounded. Now, what about this $100? Well, this $100, you see, it got compounded. It was part of this 306, and it got compounded once. So remembering how the compound interest formula works, uh, the rate for the quarter was 2%, so this is 100 times 1.02. 
Okay, now we see the pattern here. What about this $100? Well, this $100, it was compounded twice. It was in the 202, and then that was compounded, and it was also included in the, uh, the 306. So it got compounded twice. I won't split it out. I'll just say 1.02. So being compounded twice means it contributes the square of that. And finally, the original $100 here that we put in, it got compounded once, twice, three times. So it's going to contribute 100 times 1.02 cubed. Well, you might say, uh, okay, yeah, we see that formula there. That's what it all means, but it seems like a pretty big mess. Well, let's uh, rewrite it a little bit here. Maybe I should rewrite it in red or something like that. Okay, so notice there's this common factor of 100. So let me factor that 100 out. And what are we left with? Well, we're left with 1 here, uh, 1.02 plus 1.02 squared plus 1.02 cubed. Okay, uh, that looks interesting. In fact, the interesting thing is we should actually uh, recognize what this uh, expression means. This is just a what's called the finite geometric series. And so the value of that series is going to be what? It's going to be 100 times what? Well, this expression becomes what? 1.02 to the fourth power, I have to add 1 to the 3 here, minus 1 divided by 1.02 minus 1. Okay, so now you can sort of see what the value of this thing is going to become. So what's this going to become if I wanted to write a single formula for the future value here? If I write the formula, it would be what? Well, the 100 came from our uh, deposit or what we paid into the account. That's the pay times what? Well, how do we dissect this uh, numerator here? Well, there was a 1 plus, and this was then the rate per period. R is the rate per period. And it was raised to the total number of periods involved. There were four periods. And minus 1 divided by what? R minus, uh, well, actually, if you take this and subtract the 1 from it, you're just left with 0.02. So that's just going to be the the R value there, so I can just get rid of that, uh, and so this becomes the formula. Now, uh, we can uh, indicate that this is the total number of periods, compounding periods, and the R down here was just going to be the rate per period. Okay, uh, well, let's see if uh, this formula actually does work now. It would be important that it does. Okay, so let's get a calculator and see if we can calculate this thing. Okay, and I want to see that I come out to get this 402. Okay, so we'll turn the calculator on. So what do we want to calculate? Well, let's do the um, this part at a time. Uh, let's do the numerator first. So 1.02 raised to the fourth power minus 1. Okay, that gives me uh, the numerator. And then we want to divide that by 0 0.02. Okay, now we've calculated this whole expression over here. So we just have to multiply that then by 100. Well, we can actually see from the what we had before that it's actually going to work. So uh, it gives us the 4, 12, 16. Of course, there's some micro pennies involved. Okay, there we've uh, we've shown uh, how where the formula comes from. Um, in future videos, we'll go over some other applications of this formula.